Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about our match against Maristas, a team that we lost to 3-1 earlier on in the season. When we played this team at home at Campo de Divina Pastora, uh, we lost 3-1 and all three of the goals that we conceded came from individual mistakes. So all of us knew going into the game that the team were fairly solid defensively, but that they really didn't have anything special when they capitalized on a few of our errors. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, the quality of our team at the moment is very different to when we first began the season. Understanding that a lot of Spanish teams are pretty strong in the middle of the park, having technically proficient midfielders, we decided to go for a 4-3-2-1 formation. This position essentially allows us to flood the middle of the pitch with five players. We have the defensive midfielder, two wider centre mids, I was playing on the right, and then we have the two attacking midfielders behind a single striker. Naturally, this is quite a narrow formation with no wide midfielders and no wingers, so the width really needed to come from our fullbacks. Those fullbacks could trust that our defensive midfielder, Andrew for the game, would sit in and essentially create a back three when we had the ball. In training, we had been working on switching the play, knowing when it was the right time to play away from pressure, turn out of one side of the pitch, which is often quite congested as the defenders get attracted to the ball, recycle the ball around the back or through the middle of the pitch and attacking down the other flank. So when we turned up and saw that the pitch was pretty nice and pretty big as well, we were very much looking forward to the game, knowing that we would have the time and the space to make the decisions to switch the ball. In the first half, we didn't really play with the level of trust, the level of confidence in one another that we needed to. The other team squeezed fairly high up the pitch at the start of the match and pressed us with two strikers. That being said, we still had that diamond and a four versus two at the back with our goalkeeper, two centre backs and one defensive midfielder to be able to play out of that. However, Often instead of trusting us to play that four versus two rondo and then break into midfield or play the ball out wide, we elected to go long. This played right into their hands as they had a back line which were pretty physical, not very technical, not very mobile, but very good at attacking the ball in the air. And so while we dominated possession, we dominated the ball and we held possession in decent areas of the pitch, we never really threatened their goal that directly. Playing in central midfield, I found it fairly frustrating because I felt that a lot of the time we played as individuals, a lot of the time we tried to go forwards when the opportunity to recycle the ball around the back or back through midfield was often on. Despite dominating the game for the vast majority of the first half, about 20, 22 minutes into the match, the ball gets played back to our goalkeeper, goes to clear the football, but it gets deflected off the onrushing striker and goes into the back of the net. It was, yes, an unlucky, unfortunate goal to concede, but at the same time, we really didn't do what we needed to in the first 20 minutes to give ourselves the confidence to continue playing out the back and to trust our process. The longer that I've been out in Spain and the more that I've adapted to the Spanish style of football, the more I've understood that the midfield role is really a facilitative role. Often when you watch highlight videos of players like Thiago Alcantara, you see that they have lots of flashy dribbles and lots of incisive, precise passes. But I think it's very important to understand how you can direct the game as a central midfielder. Making that decision of when is the right moment to switch the play? When can we recognize that the opposition shape have shifted over to one side and we have an opportunity now to shift the ball over to their weak side? This was something that I was able to do a lot more in the second half of the game as we had better possession and we were also a little bit more confident playing out of the back. As I mentioned, we had that 4v2 diamond with our goalkeeper, two centre backs and defensive midfielder against their two strikers who were pressing us. We trusted ourselves a lot more in our own defensive third to play through. Having said this, often when we did get into the more advanced areas, into the opposition half or even into their final third, the quality and the decision making was still fairly poor. Often, and myself being included in this, we decided to chuck crosses into the box to hope that someone would be able to attack it, but this was really playing to the opposition's strengths as they had a big, strong defensive line. We really needed to be braver on the ball to be able to hold the ball for longer, attract defenders and play one-twos or little combinations in tight spaces. The moments where we did link up, we did create a few chances, but again, the consistent theme of the second half was that chances were there, decisions could have been made, but the wrong one was often chosen. When things aren't going in your favour in a football match, I think it's easy to try and take the game by the scruff of your neck yourself and to try and play as an individual. And a few of us did have that approach. Around 20, 25 minutes into the second half, myself and Andrew were substituted off the pitch with Raymond and Henry dropping in deeper 
and Brandon moving to holding midfielder. This allowed Emmanuel and McKeith to come on on the wings and create more options to go 1v1 at fullbacks in wide positions. Therefore, our coach told myself and Andrew that it was purely a tactical change in the 65th or so minute and it allowed us to have more opportunities to switch the ball and isolate fullbacks against our tricky and fast wingers. Having said that, that requires the team to work effectively and switch the ball together, combining and trusting each other, which really didn't happen at all in the second half. And after trying to push for an equaliser in the second half, we were counted on transition, the opposition cut in off the left-hand side and curled a ball into the top corner in around the 88th, 89th minute. It was a sucker punch and meant that the game was up and that we lost 2-0. It was especially frustrating for myself to watch from the sidelines having been named captain at the start of the match because Ethan was playing with the first team. In the previous games that I'd been playing, I found that as vice captain, I was spending a lot of time and a lot of energy focusing on supporting my teammates and trying to help them the best that I could. One downside that I found to this though was that often I would receive the ball and I hadn't done the basics that I needed to as an individual player to make a good decision in possession. Therefore, on this match day, I was very conscious of balancing that side of communicating and supporting my teammates with performing as an individual and being an effective player. In some sense, I believe that I leaned too much towards trying to execute my individual role as a central midfielder and really could have communicated and helped my team a little bit more during the game. As the final whistle was blown, we as a team realized that we had also blown a really good chance to beat a very average team. Our coach told us after the match that it was our attacking players who had let the team down. Yes, there had been mistakes in possession. Yes, we had conceded an unnecessary goal, but with 90 minutes of the game, with a massive pitch, with the quality that we had on the pitch, we, we still couldn't score. Speaking with the coach after the game, he made it clear to me that it's not just the attackers who are the attacking players, but it's also the central midfielders. It's also the fullbacks when we have possession. It's also the center backs when they go out for set pieces. So really, it was a team loss, but I think the onus was on the decision-making in the attacking third. Another frustrating game to tell you about ballers. I hope that in this coming week you find a way to pursue your passion of football. I hope that you find a way to support the people around you. Because remember, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Remember, ballers find a way. El boliviano loco, no? Boliviano loco, sí, sí. <laughs>